Hi, how's it going? This is Resident of Commonwealth for YouTube. Uh, back with another Dark Shadows video for you guys and gals. I am here to give my reaction review to episode 39. So here we go. There's a great house. And there's the Evans Cottage. By the way, this episode is directed by John Sedwick, uh, written by Art Wallace. Now, I just paused this video because I really love the way Dan Curtis Productions and John Sedwick shoot this part of how they shoot the Evans Cottage. It feels a bit, it feels a lot different, or at least a bit different than the way Lila Swift had shot it. Um, we don't see the door like to go into to come into uh, the Evans Cottage. What we're seeing is we're back from the couch a bit. We see a chair, and what we really see, we see the window, and you see the the two portraits. You see the the easel with the portrait, and you see the uh, with the painting, and you see a portrait, uh, the portrait of Maggie's mother, and obviously you see the liquor bottle and the glasses. I love the way they shoot this. It's it feels different than what the way Leela would would have shot it. It it sort of gives John sort of his own signature to a degree, in my opinion. If you disagree, please do, and go watch episode 39. And here's why they're shooting it that way. You have Sam, who's walking from the kitchen uh, with a coffee cup, worth a few hundred dollars anyway. There's a knock at his door. Uh, Dave, uh, David Ford... <laughs> character Sam Evans puts on a coffee cup. But who is it? It's Roger. So Roger is visiting Sam. Oh, uh, by the way, the the bandage is gone from Roger's uh wound from Ro Roger's head. And what we see is a very in this scene is Roger's scar. You can somewhat see it and make it out even with, you know, the episode being in black and white. So the effects team does a really good job here. And they're making, I think they're doing this on purpose, too. I'm going to pause the video because I don't, <laughs> I feel like I'm talking over them and I don't try to. But the way they have the camera, now they've done this in episodes where you see face, where you see the character's face sort of close up. But what you see here, instead of just a plain old close up, you get an over the shoulder shot. It, they're sort of over Sam's right shoulder. You see Sam's, you know, part of his right head, and you see Sam, uh, sorry, Roger's scar, and you see Lewis Edmonds giving this very serious look because they're about to have a conversation about Burke. Again, great camera work by Dan Curtis Productions and John Sedwick. It's a really good job. I've Again, the makeup team did a great job with that scar, too. You can really make it out. I love how you see how the difference between the two characters too is, other than their personalities. Um, you see the way the light comes off of David Ford, Sam Evans. It looks like he's sweating, and so Sam is telling Roger he could not dissuade. Um, he couldn't talk Burke into out of the portrait. Um, and here's Burke's car is pulling up to Sam's cottage. You hear the ominous music playing. I don't know if you guys. And you get a close up of Roger's scar, which even looks still looks great. Uh, there's the intro music. It's just a really nice job. I do think when you go back through these episodes, I'm sort of interrupting myself, that you can sort of see the directors. I do believe are putting their own stamp on certain episodes by the way they shoot the cameras it's a really good job <laughs> so roger walked from town that's how he won't see roger's car i like that i like how they cover that so sam tells roger i gotta answer the door i already talked to him on the phone this morning he knows i'm here so and roger goes and hides and Ma and Mag and <laughs> In the bathroom. <laughs> uh, there's a dog. They're knocking on the door. 
<laughs> and there's Burke Devlin. Mitchell Ryan. Probably the best character on Dark Shadows who would have Stone Cold Steve Austin's theme. When you hear the glass, it's your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <they're good. coughs> I love that. I love what David Ford just did. He he said that his hand's not as steady as it ought to be, and he was shaking his left hand. Then he takes his right hand and sort of is rubbing his left hand to let Burke know, "Hey, I'm just. I don't think I'd be too good at uh, painting your portrait." And well. Burke is, Burke's like, like when? He's like, I don't know. So next week. And I love what Mitch Ryan says. He said, so pose your hand, start shaking next week. And then we'll pull it off again. So basically, yeah, Burke says no dice. He's not taking no for an answer. And that's something we've been getting the hint of to the build up to this episode that Burke was not going to take a no for an answer. And he's not going to take a note today. They're going to at least start the drawing of Burke's portrait in this episode. And you are going to get a bit of that in this. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and Burke says, are there, is anyone putting any pressure on you? Specifically Roger. Maybe Roger. Didn't want any him and uh, Sam spending any time together. Yeah, he's jealous. No, <laughs> He's jealous. He said that the Collins aren't applying any pressure. Well, accessory Roger. And like Burke says, he's I'm ready to pose, and now you're trying to talk me out of it again. Burke says, I like you, Sam. I always have. He says, I want to understand. Fifteen hundred dollars for a portrait in nineteen sixty for a portrait nineteen sixty six. My God. If I knew how to paint, <laughs> if I knew how to paint, if I knew how to draw really well, paint, I would. I, I wouldn't give a shit. Uh, I'm, I'm earning some some money. Fifteen hundred dollars. My God. Burke says about writing him a check, and he says he tries to talk him down on the money about a thousand. And Burke says, "No, I'll pay you what I told you, fifteen hundred. I'm sure I'll get my money's worth." And there's the ominous music. And now we go to we go to Collinwood, and we see Frank Schofield's character, Bill Malloy, and we see Elizabeth Collins Stoddard. Joan Bennett's character. I love how Frank Schofield is sitting on the back of the couch, which is to Elizabeth Frank Schofield's Bill Malloy. He's sitting on the back of the couch to to Elizabeth's right side, and she's making now uh, signing Bill signing uh, documents for the cannery, and because that's why Bill's there, he's sending her doc. He brought documents for her to sign. It concerns the cannery. It'll increase the mach uh, canning machinery by 20 cents of speed, by 20%. And nobody will be lose a job. <laughs> that is something, too, we see in these early episodes. We see a lot of the business aspect take place with the cannery and such, which is nice. I mean, we've we've met an employee in Joe Haskell. And by the way, he's not going to be the only employee we meet that we do meet. Uh, we're going to meet some of Liz's uh, captains, actually, in an episode. Not this one, but in an episode. Um, so, Bill Malloy tells her that uh, Burke Devlin has been making inquiries about any of the debts she has on her property, her business, all the bills. He's he's making inquiries. 
And she says, what reason would she, he have? He said, Moby Dick. I love the reference because what he's really referencing is Captain Ahab's obsession to take down the white whale. What uh, Bill Malloy is saying here is basically, uh, not basically that Burke Devlin is Captain Ahab and Liz and the Collins family are white whales. Actually, Moby, Moby Dick is based on a true story in a lot of ways. Because really what they were hunting were sperm whales. A um, little side note. And one of the sperm whales... He, sperm whales are very, very smart. One of the sperm whales began to notice, Hey, every time this uh, boat comes around, my mates you know, are killed. They end up dead. They go missing. So it decided to ram the boat. <laughs> it's, that happens. Uh, revenge is a dish best circle. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Captain Ahab chasing after the white whale. And that's what he's comparing to Colin's family to. They're the white whale and Burke's, Burke's Ahab, as I said. Destroying the finnet herd. That's a great line. Single minded. Yep. When, some, when someone starts checking up, find out how much money you owe. That's. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> I, I would say that's not good at all. If we wait. He, Bur or, sorry, Bill says if we wait till Burke shows his hand, it might be too late. I, I agree. I, the, Bill says he wants to stop it. Bill. So, Bill, Bill wants... Liz to give him permission to stop him by any means necessary. Uh, great, great job. And who who do we cut back to? No, not Burke this time. And Liz says she's not afraid of Burke, and the phone rings. Well, we'll, we'll see about that. We'll see. She says you might as well answer it. And Bill does. Person to person call. Portland. So Liz Liz says Ned Colton. The fire the smile on Joan Bennett's face as Elizabeth is so good is like really great to see. She had a beautiful smile. And she tells Ned Coulter she wants him to come back as soon as he can. She says, I know you know a job, but it's important. It's all about Bert Devlin. <laughs> it is too. She says, think quickly. He says, let him, he, because he, he wants to think about, it. I love what Bill, uh, Bill Moy, so you're not afraid of Burke, huh? So, Bill Malloy reminds Liz that when Ned Coulter stopped working for Liz, that Liz told Bill that she never wanted to see Ned Coulter again. And now here she is calling him. It, it's very telltale here. And it's finally great to see that. I've talked about this before with Bill Malloy. Bill was the one person who could call out Liz. And he does. And he, he can. He can and does. She says, do you eject? He comes back. He said, no. He's a good man. Smart, fast, just type you know, Burke. That's what she thought too. But you're not afraid of Bert. Simple. So, again, if you've never watched this episode, something we learned too about Ned Coulter, and Bill Molloy points it out that Ned Coulter was Liz's business manager for well over 15 years. That's a long time. <laughs> That's a long time. And here's a character, too, keep in mind, we never actually literally see, but we do hear about. Again, Dark Shadows does a great job of mentioning characters. I really need to do my Angelique breakdown. Uh, I might do it after this video. And Bill says, you back, practically beg Ned to come back. She says, I just asked him. He said, put it any way you want. 
So Burke does worry her. But shut why shouldn't I ask him? Oh, <laughs> I love, I love Frank Schofield in this episode. He's like, whether, whether you give me permission or not, I'm gonna stop Burke Devlin, and I'm stopping Cole today. And you see his facial expression. He is, he's ready to take on the devil himself. <laughs> And speaking of the devil, I mean Burke Devlin. <laughs> he says, "How you doing?" He's sitting there. He's. I love how uh, Mitchell Ryan's sitting on the stool. He's not moving, and he's like, "Oh, how you doing?" And here's a guy who's trying to sketch him. <laughs> I love this shot here. You see a bit of the window. The two men are sitting down. Uh, Sam Evans is sitting with his leg, white right leg crossed over his left. He's got the sketch pad. He. Sam Evans is left-handed? I never noticed this before. It, is Sam left-handed? He's using his left hand to draw. I'm, I'm left-handed. So I asked. I, I'm so busy talking, I'm not noticing certain things. So, uh, Sam Evans is left-handed? We'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll try to pay more attention. So, Burke did ask... Uh, or sorry, yeah, Burke did ask Sam, did you know Roger 10 years ago? About the time of his trial, did you know him then? And Sam says, I'm not going to get anywhere with the sketch. If you keep talking too much. And Burke said, why don't you take, I'll take a break. Uh, I'm stiff anyway. The drawing looks pretty decent for just like, it looked like it's getting started. You see Burke's face a bit. Talk to me about Roger Collins. Can you play me be, being interested, Sam? Dark Mountain. He said, how about a drink? So Sam says he's going to have a drink. Burke says, oh, what about that headache? He says, I haven't had a headache. And then he realizes, oh, I did say I have a headache. <laughs> he says, help me, Burke. Can't remember half the things I said. Hi, dear. <laughs> this is why we please forget about this. He takes a drink. <laughs> Just love that. He's like, oh, you know what? I love how Burks picks up his portrait. Good job. He's pouring himself another drink, too. So Burke wants to go back in the bathroom and wash his hands off. He says about Maggie's stockings are hanging up in there. He says use the kitchen sink. Sam tells Burke that. And Burke says, wouldn't have a lady there. <laughs> and Sam laughs. It is a funny line. Again, I do love the camera work, how they pan the camera. From one side where somebody moved, like Burke moves into the sink, you don't see you don't see him at the sink, but then they pan back and you see the you see uh, the portraits. Now you don't see him at all because Sam's standing there answering the phone, and he says, "Burke, it's for you." He said, "I work at the hotel, Mister Malone." Ten minutes hotel restaurant. And Burke's Burke's going to go talk to Mr. Malloy. Remember this is still this is still the same day of um the next day. The, the, so <laughs> this is like our I think our third or fourth day in uh, in Collowood. I want to say it's our fourth. Our, uh, Vicky's fourth day in Collowood. <laughs> so we're still on days. Um, that's the thing about a new episode. Like I've talked about. That just because you're on a new, epi a new episode. Doesn't mean you're on a different day. Because they. I think they do about. 
four to five episodes, depending on how long they want to stretch out the actual story that they're, because they're not revealing everything, even if they do tell you a five story sort of piece to what they're doing, to continue what they're doing. You do get bits and pieces each episode of stuff, which is really cool. Sam tells uh, Roger, because Burke has left, that he thought about leaving. He said, why not leave you if he can't find you? If he can't question she said, I'll give, he said, I'll give you some money. She said, he said, you weren't so touchy 10 years ago. I think they do a really good job here too. In this episode, when Bert, when, uh, sorry, when Roger says that you see Sam's face and he's thinking about that 10 years ago, but he's also thinking about his wife. And I think you could tell that with David Ford's th facial, facial features. One of the most, again, there are characters in Dark Shadows you never literally meet. And one of those characters is Sam Evans' wife, um, who died during the, uh, who, who died, you know, all those years ago. He's, because something you're going to come to learn, spoiler alert, is Sam needed the money for Maggie's mother's medical bills. She was very sick. You're not going to learn in this episode. Again, I love the close-up of the scar. It looks good. And we're here, we're here at the uh, hotel dining room. So something I noticed too with John Sedwick's camera work in this episode, he sort of pans back and he goes to the left to show Bill Malloy and Burke Devlin after Burke sits down and then he sort of comes back to the right, you know, and he zooms in on them as they're having this conversation about Burke's portrait and Burke's talking about his portrait to Bill Malloy and he says about after it gets on he'll he'll give it to Liz. <laughs> Um, how my face would look like anything called. And Bill Boy, you'll never make it, Burke. I love that line. He said, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Probably. This daughter. You want to buy him out, don't you? Whatever put that idea in your head. It's the truth. When a character isn't afraid to call out their own boss, they're not afraid to call out anybody and confront them with what they feel is the truth and the facts, because it is the truth. So that's exactly what Bill Malloy is confronting Burke Devlin with. He confronted Liz with the truth, and now he's here to confront Burke Devlin with with his truth, what he, what Burke Devlin is really after. And I... Bill Malloy is probably one of the most underrated characters in the series. He says, I'm not going to let you punish that whole family. Burke, what do you want from me? little honesty. Bill says, you think they're the Collins family railroaded you in the prison? Uh, so, Burke, you're doing <laughs> And Bill says, I want to make you the deal with you. The, I love the close up here of Burke Devlin's face, Mitchell Ryan's face, as Bill Malloy is talking. Uh, John Sedwick and Dan Curtis Productions do a really great job here. Because what Bill Malloy says really does shock Roger, and Mitchell Ryan does a great job of selling with his facial features. I've talked about this with Dark Shadows before, that 
it's not always the words, it's the facial features. Well, it's, it is, it's both here, really, in this episode as well, too, just like it was with Liz in the previous episode. Only this time, it's Burke's turn to be shocked. Uh, Bill Moy says, if you leave them alone, I promise you, I will do everything in my power to get your name cleared. And Mitch Ryan's face is sh shell-shocked by this. It is a really great facial feature. Go watch episode 39. Again, there, there, he shakes his He said, are you serious? <laughs> what do you think, son? <laughs> and he looks down like, okay, this... He said, you want to make a deal with me? He said, I want an answer. He said, why? What I have in my mind will help everyone. By getting you out of their hair. Really think that's what I hear? Because I know that's what you're here to do. So give me an answer. He says, I think so. Because Burke asked Bill, are you sure you can? He said, I think so. He said, all three of them, leave them alone. He said, I noticed he didn't mention Roger. I love Bill. It's like she said, you noticed right. And he's not smiling. He's giving this very serious face. And Burke says, I have to think about this. The devil's in the detail. <laughs> He said, I got someone I got to talk to. Well, you're thinking I'm never going to go talk to somebody. And Burke's all smiles. <laughs> and there's Roger drinking. And who do we see? Sam Evans, because we're back at the Evans cottage. Uh, Roger, I don't think you've understood a word I said to Sam. He said, you neither just see, avoid Burke or leave Collinwood. Collin support, sorry. He said, now I have something to tell you. My freedom and future at stake. They're both very important to me. If your presence continues to threaten me, I will give every action to protect myself. I make myself perfectly clear. He said, I got something to tell you. Uh-oh. I was expecting you to make those threats. So... Sam wrote a letter about what happened 10 years ago. He said, he asked who you, did you write it to? He said, it doesn't matter. They're going to, they're going to sort of repeat some of this. Well, not sort of, they're going to repeat some of the blackmail stuff with uh, Barnabas and Julie. Cause remember Julius uh, writes a letter about Barnabas and she gives it to a lawyer. He said, you wouldn't dare write a letter. So I love Lewis Sedman's interaction to calm to frantically. <laughs> He's yelling at him. He said, who has that letter? He's not telling him. He says, I want to know who was. He goes, why don't you ask around? And that new woman up the hill. Bill Malloy, did I hear my name mentioned? I love Frank Schofield's entrance. Like a boss. <laughs> Did I hear my name mentioned? Shouldn't keep your door open, sir. We don't want company. We hear the music. And that's the end of the episode. Really, again, really great job of both, not just the camera work by John Sedwick and Dane Carter's Productions, but obviously the facial features. Uh, by Mitchell Ryan. Uh, I love, I like I said, I really love the, the scar that we see on Roger's head. It's a really great job by the effects team uh, to have the scar. I think, again, there are a lot of underrated aspects about Dark Shadows. The facial features are one of them. And another thing is, you know, often enough times we, we hear about characters we don't actually get to physically see. Um, Ned Coulter is one of them. We heard his name in previous episodes. We hear about him more in this episode. And we get a little more history into Ned Coulter in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Have a good day.